All right, guys, welcome back to another recap. Uh, Monday, I think Mondays, well, I don't think. I know Mondays are by far my best days trading in the market. I can look at my history for the last two years, year and a half, or whatever, how much I have tracked on TraderView, and Mondays is by far my biggest green days ever. My biggest peanut ever is on Mondays, and today is just adding to that. So up a little bit over a thousand dollars today. Um, trade it pretty good. I missed a lot of good setups on on uh, GCT. So I made 500. The most money I made on on any ticker today was GCT with 500. But I actually missed every single time that this stock ended up making a squeeze. I was not in during those moves. So you know I traded decently. You know I mean I traded one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, but I think these are two V euro trades. So this is five tickers today. All of them are green, and like I said, I missed the big pullaways on GCT to uh, to really uh, get a big win. But you know, still a thousand dollars today is great. Um, if you guys are new to my rec to my recaps here, I do these every single day unless I have something going on and I wasn't able to make one. I think I missed one on Friday, but back today, a thousand dollars day. Uh, I have it uh, filtered by a. Uh, I'm out on the calendar. Um, and uh, I also trade live every single morning completely free right here on YouTube. So if you want to trade with, I had 200 people this morning, the first time I've been over 200. So thank you for all of you guys that are watching live. Um, but if you want to come and trade live with us, all you got to do is subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, and I am live 15 minutes before market opens. Now, before I get into the recap, I do want to say thank you to Jesse and to Oso Polar. Both of them donated a little bit of money my way. Um, it doesn't matter how much you guys donate, whether it's a dollar, fifty dollars. Um, Honestly, it really puts a smile on my face, and I am very thankful for that. I know you guys are getting a lot of information on my live streams. You guys are learning a lot, and so for you, for those of you guys that do end up giving back to me, um, I really do appreciate that, and it, it, it makes my day to see a donation of $1 if it's a dollar. I'm not saying it was a dollar. I'm just saying um, as opposed to making a 1000 obviously the money is great, but I know that somebody out there is really enjoying my live streams and taking their money to give back to me as well, so I really do appreciate that. Um, other than that, I'm going to to stop rambling and I'm gonna go ahead and go over my trades I do this all the time every single day so I'm gonna go over GCT since it's the majority of the ones you guys are gonna want to watch um, how I traded this and the moves that I actually missed so this is GCT um, now this wasn't on my radar it was on my radar because it was a gapper but it wasn't on my radar for the first five ten minutes of the market opens and honestly I'm pretty surprised that this stock ended up putting the move that it did because I just thought this was going to be a fader for the rest of the day the daily chart is okay pretty being down this one was a $62 highs and now it's what back down to four so it made a little bit of a pop today but ultimately I did not see this stock putting in this move Anyways, I let it I let it come up. I let it reclaim VWAP, and then once it was reclaiming VWAP, not necessarily that it's just VWAP, and I was looking to dip for VWAP, but I was looking for a nice leg with volume, and then try to get some dips and say, okay, this is the time to start stepping in the gas. So you guys can see my trades here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them so you guys can see my trade exits and entries a little bit better. Um, and why I was taking these in the first place. So I do have a downtrend on this one from pre-market, which was a high of day previously uh, today, a pre-market high there. And then this kind of random spike. So at that point, I was able to connect two uh, points and give me my third one here. Now, this was a little bit extended. I'm going to show you guys one, two different break of downtrends, one that I will 100% play it and aggressively. Another one, I might play it maybe less aggressively or anything like that, but uh, not as confident. And one is when you have a pretty nice move already and you're breaking downtrend. To me, the move happened here and this thing is going from there to there and breaking downtrend that looks pretty extended right so uh, if I'm breaking that break of downtrend here I'm gonna be a little bit more hesitant to take that pullback there because we've already put in a good leg so I waited for that to tuck uh, back in and then as it started pulling back in this area that's where I started uh, buying the stock and I think I took my first add on this red candle here and then I added back on this bottom candle, this right down here. And I added pretty good on this one. I think I was up to 5K shares total, maybe 7,500 shares. So it looks like I added 25, 25. So I added 5K, sold them, and then I added 5K again. Um, and this is when I really was looking for this thing to open up. I think this thing opened up here and I was, you know, already up three, four hundred dollars or whatever on the stock. Um, I just sold a little bit there, fifteen hundred at the top, but I still had thirty five hundred shares on this one. And, you know, recently uh, in this market we haven't really gotten anything to open up and so when it, this started kind of making a lower high there and tucking under that six forty seven line 
I was getting a little scared. I was like, this thing is going to stop me out again. It's going to flush right back down. It's going to go from being up five, six hundred dollars on the straight to only lock it in 200, 300. And so this one, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to risk it today. You know, I need to get some money in new week just get some profit under me and get a little bit of a cushion and then see if i can make something happen so this thing pulls up i think i sell a little bit more and then i kept a stop right down here somewhere like that or right under the scandal which ended up stopping me out and that was a good stop because i stopped out pretty high but it didn't go for me and then at that point i was like you know that's one stuff that's two stuffs i really didn't think this was going to squeeze and i guarantee you by looking at the chart a lot of shorts didn't think this was going to squeeze but it pulled back down to that level i guess i could have added again i I probably wouldn't have seen that after this kind of a stuff here and stuff there. Wasn't the biggest stuff, but you know, I just missed this ad down here and unfortunately it ended making this move afterwards. So I was looking for this type of move here when I was fully in. Didn't happen, took my shares out, pulls back down, and then ends up getting that move afterwards. So I missed all of that. Um, at that point, I didn't get back into the stock until up here. Some of these dips down here, I was trying to nail those entries there. I think I got a nice pull away on one of these. Let me uh, show my trades again. So I nailed this dip here. Uh, pretty even trade. Now, I took some of these dips here, and I was getting a little bit of profit. So selling 687, 690 was my biggest sell. Um, I don't think I got anything close to $7, so it looks like I was fully out on that one before $7. And then that was it. Now, another thing I also like to point out to you guys is um, when these things start opening and putting up di several flags like this, you obviously want to play them aggressive, but you want to play them aggressive early on. Now, it's hard to tell it's going to be the first flag out of three or four. I get that, but you're playing it aggressive. The second time it starts to flag, I play it less aggressive. So I played it with 5,000 shares first, and then it starts flagging again. Um, and then this time I only take 1500 shares so not even as nearly as half of what I was taking now This up here was looking a little risky I could have taken some ads through these here pivot there Maybe snipe some of these lows, but if I would have taken that I definitely would have played it even less aggressive Maybe a thousand shares maybe 500 shares, but the higher it gets the riskier it goes And so therefore you should definitely drop your share size when you guys do that um, This right here would have been the perfect place to add I actually looked at it here and I was like, you know what, this is going to be a good ad. And I was about to click the buy button and that it just happened to be coincidence when the stock ended up ripping. So I ripped up to here. Um, and at this point, I was like, I don't trust the stock. It, this one, I already had an actual good stuff down here. I really didn't think this one was going to squeeze. And again, it pops up, makes a nice squeeze. And once again, I'm not in it. And after that, I was like, you know what, this is too extended. I'm not going to touch it. I did miss an easy trend line touch here. So you guys always keep in mind. So there's the lows of those candles there this one here and it correlated perfectly to all of these right here if i would have taken that on any of these three candles here i would have caught that nice move there but once again you know i made 500 dollars on the stock and i traded this range and this range i absolutely missed the big pull away and i missed the big pull away there so you know pretty good for trading the range pretty good profit for trading the range but didn't do a good job at nailing the big trade on this one um and that was just unfortunate um, so now if you guys are looking, why did I take those trades here, push down, push up, looking for this five minute flag here, kind of low volume pullback here. You can see some of these candles had low volume. And then again here, push up, nice rip, nice, uh, short covering and then flagging this one. I was looking for the flag of high days here, which is where it started pivoting there kind of then end up going again. And then same thing pushes up and then pulls back down to that pivot, starts holding it and then eventually flushes. And at that point, then I, I thought this thing was going to keep fading all day or or just be range trapped up here but surprisingly it's coming back so if you guys are short hopefully you guys took some profit down here maybe still profit here and then have a stop right above seven with that being said if you're still trading the stock for the rest of the day i would be pretty interested to see if this one gets over seven dollars starts holding seven dollars and then maybe takes a look at that 750 again 748 was the previous high so i'd be looking at 750 so that was gct um the other trade that i took was sprc and i'm going to go over sprc because this is a break of downtrend kind of extended so i'm a little if you're not downtrend didn't take it i took it afterwards but then sprc is a downtrend break that i will take because that stock is not very um not very extended right and so on here you have this downtrend from pre-market high as well and then kind of stock just makes a nice little push but that little push is already breaking that downtrend so there's where you would get the retest of that downtrend which would be this red candle there matches with the VWAP, matches with the retest downtrend. Now this stock obviously didn't push up, but if you're able to nail that trade on that retest down here on any of these two candles, that red candle or that green candle, then you would have had a nice move from 
let's say 150 averages all the way up to 160 almost 10 cents um, that's enough for you to take some profit that's enough for you to put a stop loss at break even that's enough for you to not be in a red losing trade and if this thing would have opened up it would have gone 16 165 775 break of new high of day that's 20 cents on your trade and if this thing fails and you know you stop out break even here take some profits or if you still held through this pullback here again more profits stopped out here break even or a small loss trade there so that's exactly the one i took i missed that one but i did take it here again so i re-added on these lows here uh, let me show you guys my trades if you guys like seeing that you can pause it um so I added there, and then as it started curling up, I took my profit, took my profit. And this was kind of like that trade on uh, on GCT, right? It's not going. I'm taking my profit out. I'd rather just stop out than this thing completely turn back around me and not be a winning trade. So I made $150 on this one. Tiny little bit of move again. Nothing opening up and still getting some profit. So when these things start opening up, I'm definitely going to be bringing in the, uh, the runners all the way to the top. Um, next one is going to be VRU. Before I show you the guys who traded on this one, I mean, I'll show you to you guys anyways. I do have to say, I kind of made a mistake on this one. Um, it worked in my favor. But when I jumped into this stock, I always tell you guys, see how fast you can make 10 cents, right? 10 cents is easy because, you know, it's a lot easier to say how much can I make with 10 cents as opposed to 6 cents or 7 cents or 9 cents or something. So that's usually how I gauge it. If I take a 1,000 share position and I get 10 cents on that 1,000 shares, that's 100 bucks. If I take 10,000 shares and I get 10 cents, that's $1,000, right? So it's pretty easy for me, 10 cents, depending on how much share size I'm taking. If I take 5,000, that's 500 bucks, you know? Um... And so on this one, I honestly just, I've traded this one before and I knew what this one's capable of, VERU, but when I traded this one today, I just totally didn't look at it and I totally forgot how volatile it is. So if you look at the stock, it goes from 14 to 15. That's a dollar move and some of these scandals are pretty big. You know, this scandal right itself, the one that I jumped in goes from 1430 up to 1490. That's 70 cents on just one, one minute candle. Um, and so my problem was that I jumped in on this one with 1,500 shares for, for just a quick high of day breakout. I was just looking for a quick high of day breakout on this one, which was 1478, the previous high. And um, I jumped in it there, and instantly I was down 100 or 200 bucks. You know, it popped up, bought, and then started pushing down a little bit. And at that point, I was like, "Oh frick!" I didn't realize how volatile this is. I think I'm a little. I'm. I think I'm in a little too heavy for a dip. I mean, not for a breakout trade, not a dip trade. Um, luckily, uh, my breakout trade instincts and whatever trade was still correct, and so I still got the breakout on that shit on that trade. And as soon as I got the breakout on the other side, I was starting to unload. Now, another thing I also pointed out on the live stream on this one is you have a high of 1478 with the stock moving this fast. Half dollars, whole dollars, half dollars, whole dollars, half dollars, whole dollars. And so when I broke that 1476, I mentioned I'm not looking for 1476. I'm looking for $15. So I want to wait for this one to get past 1476 and then really take my profit closer to $15, which I ended up doing, you know. So here I took... The shares in at fourteen sixty, sold fourteen eighties, fourteen ninety sevens, fifteen dollars. So on the other side of fifteen dollars by a little bit, and that was my winning trade there. So I played a little more aggressive than I wanted to, but I think out of that trade I came out with three hundred dollars profit. Um, and then I came back here, took some small scalps again for a high of day, but this time I definitely dropped my share size. Um, I missed a couple of good dip buys on this one. This right here was a clean pivot off of this right here. So kind of bounced down back down to that level could have taken that ad there and then pushed back up uh, trend line touch here kind of if he could have taken that one there back up the highs and then this one ended up hitting another high this was a tiny trade here for like five buck profit but this right here as soon as you see this 1479 holding which was previous high of days once you start reclaiming that with this volume here so look at those two candles there look at these two candles there you could have started taking some ads here again, looking for that new high of day again. Missed that play there, ended up hitting that high of day and ran a little bit more. Here, this was a winning trade even though I was looking for it to break high of day and $16, but missed that one. Made 5 bucks on it, but that was just now before trying to start my... Uh, my recap trading. Um, that's about it. Tesla, um, I'm a little bit upset about Tesla. 
Tesla, I read it like a book again this morning, and I mentioned today, before market open, I said Tesla is pulling back down again. Tesla has that low of 198.59 or 50-something, 50 um, and uh, and today we're pulling uh, pretty aggressively, or yesterday, Friday we pulled down pretty aggressively, so I would not be surprised if we go back and retest 200s. Um, I mentioned we had a pretty nice resistance support around 203. 30s to 203 203 with 30 40 cents and i said if we get under that 203 i know that the lows are just right under that 200 198 two dollars down there um if tesla pulls down under 203 and tries to try try to come back up to 203 and gets rejected that's where i want to take a short on tesla under 203 back up to 203 retesting 203 short all the way down to that 198 low or 200s it could bounce to 200s or at that point it might go all the way down to the 198s and uh, that's exactly what it ended up doing so it ended up going right under 203 as a matter of fact I had that that support there drawn you see it bounces through three that's 203 that's confirming my level there ends up going below it pops back up to 203 that could have been short number one could have been short number two, could have been short number three, and this thing ended up fading all the way down to 200s where we thought it might be a bounce, so bounce, 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 and then eventually gave that level out and went right back down to 198, created a new low, and then after that I was like, I don't know what's going to happen now. My trade was here, and I absolutely missed it. I missed it on the, on the short side with shares because I was busy trading the other ones through here, but I did see it at one point when it was up here, and I almost bought a put on it, but I just, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be, uh, What's it called? I couldn't keep an eye on it as close as, if I, as I wanted it to, so I didn't want to buy a put and then be in the wrong. And by the time I look back at it, I'm down 30, 40% on it because I'm trading GCT and all these other stocks. So I definitely messed it up on Tesla. I did take a short uh, at the beginning, so this is my only short that I took. The previous low on the day was this one, which was like 201.13 something. And so on this tiny little bit of pullback, I was trying to hit this top of the flag-ish to create that low and see if we end up dropping. I thought we had already put in 203 bounce. I thought we would already put in 203 rejection. And so I was looking to see if this one actually wanted to fade here. Kind of what it did here down back over here. Kind of what it did there. I wanted to see if it would do it here. And so I was adding in short on this one. It started trying to pull back, but it looked a little bit too aggressively from the buyer side. So I ended up getting out of that. I shorted 200 shares, and I think at the max I was up almost $100. I think I saw $90 profit on this one within this tiny little bit of a red candle here as I was pushing down. But I was being pretty stubborn because I really wanted that low day and that big fade, which I never got. And so I ended up bouncing, got out of it, and only made 20 bucks profit on that one. Uh, so I, I left a little bit of money on the table there, and that's okay. Money on my trade and then money on the perfect setup that I missed. But other than that, that's it. PHUN was another trade that I took. This one I kind of got lucky to get out of a green trade. So I took that trade at this pullback here. I got filled kind of high, lack of volume and spreads. And then on the way out, also lack of volume and spreads. I think at one point, like on these tiny little bit of a candles up here, I was up like 200 bucks on this trade, 150 but at that point, I decided to cut it out because SPRC was going. So I got out of this trade for $8 profit, looked at SPRC, and ended up pulling back down a little bit. Could have taken this flag down here for this new high push, but just the volume of this one was not the best. And uh, SPRC definitely was looking better then. And that's going to be it for today, guys. A little bit of a rambling, a little bit of a, a lot of trades that I went over. But hopefully you guys are able to see why I'm taking them, where I'm taking them, where I messed up. You know, GCT, I messed up several times. I messed up here not keeping runners for that move. I messed up here not looking at that trend line or getting in too late for all of these pullbacks. Um, missed a big move. I could have missed some ads down here to take small share size for the bounce. Even though it didn't bounce, still would have been a nice trade. Missed up on those. So not clean trading, but definitely paid off for, for what I had to do today to end up $1,000. Um, and that's going to be it for today. Once again, thank you to Jesse. Thank you to Oso Polaro, which is a walker on YouTube. Uh, you guys are amazing, and I can't thank you guys enough. Um, other than that, guys, I will see you guys tomorrow in another live trading session, 15 minutes before market opens, or um, on tomorrow's recap if you guys don't tune into the sessions. You guys leave some likes on this video, leave some comments down below, and uh, hopefully you guys end up in a nice green day today. So I'll see you guys next time.